Roll up, roll up! The carnival! Adrenaline's like a big t- Oh, you gone? Uh, I was just starting the recording, but oh. I cropped this bit out anyways. Yeah. You say like adrenaline's like a big talking point for like a lot of wrestlers and how they get through it and that. But I'm not even sure I get much adrenaline with matches these days. <laughs> I think I've just kind of like settled in. I've been doing it for so long. I don't get, I don't get so much adrenaline. Like I never get nervous anymore for a match. Yeah. Like, for year, I can't remember the last time I was nervous for a match. It was probably like five, six, seven years ago. Maybe like the last one of the last Dragon Cake matches I did. It was probably the last time I was nervous. But well, we'll save we'll save that for the show. I'm going to ask you about that then. Nerves. <clears throat> All right, just bear with me. Um. Put my phone on silent and tell the missus I'm recording now. Yeah, I completely forgot that she said she was taking the little one to work with her. Um, so I was like, right, I've got until like half one to get it done by. And then when you message saying quarter past one, I was like, oh, crap. And she was like, well, I'm taking her anyways. I was like, oh, that's all right then. We've got a form on board. Oh, crikey, it's a little tighter under my neck than I remember it being. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna get in lockdown. And just, just this one bit under my neck again. <laughs> just undo it. <laughs> all right, so I'll count of all. Just make sure I've got the Wrestle Carnival dates that are coming up as well. So the first one is first of August. The first show, isn't it? Pardon? That show, isn't it? First of August. Yeah. It's one of those, like, I've done so many of these and even so many of, like, my own where it's like, and don't forget, shows are returning, we're going to be at this place, and then it just doesn't happen because of COVID, so hopefully these ones do happen. Yeah. Especially because I get married on the 9th, so hopefully it will be going ahead. <laughs> <laughs> right. <clears throat> Hey everybody, welcome to Wrestle Carnival's Beyond the Canvas, it's Kate Johansson and today I'm joined by the Lion Kid himself. Lion Kid, thank you for coming on. Thank you Kurt for having me, I've been looking forward to this since three days ago when you asked me. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm really excited, like when that graphic came up to say the Lion Kid's going to be part of Wrestle Carnival, I messaged Gary as well, I was like perfect um, choice, he's one of the first people I came across in British when I first started looking in British wrestling, and it'll be really exciting to see what you do with uh, Wrestle Carnival. So, welcome to the team. I'm very excited to be part of the team. What was the uh, first bit you come across then? You said I was one of the first. What group was that for? Um, so I don't know if it's either potentially IPW. Um, one of my oh, friends, yeah. one of my friends, he was into the whole Brit rest scene, and he was like, "Oh, you need to look at it." and I, I wasn't looking at British wrestling at that point, and it showed me a few different DVDs, and there was you. And I was like, I like him. And then I started learning about like you'd been um, to Japan with Dragon Gate, and I remember when I started playing TW, when we'd be creating your own shows, you'd be the, one of the first people I'd get in. I'd be like, right, we'll, we'll get the line, we'll get Lion Kid in, 
Um, and then, because it's harder with me being up north, because you're, you're based around Portsmouth. Yeah, I live in Portsmouth, like down south. Most of the shows I do down south. It's quite funny, like the first half of my career, um, like the first five, six years of it, um, it's funny, it was harder for me to get booked up north than it was to get booked in like foreign countries. Yeah. So I did more work in France and Germany and Italy and um, Ireland and all these places. I did more work in other countries than I did like the north part of our own country, which I thought was kind of funny. And uh, how, why do you think that is? Um, I really don't know. I don't know. I, I think England just has so much talent that why do you pay extra money to bring somebody to the other end of the country when you've already got so much great talent on your doorstep? So, yeah. um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's part of it. I'm not sure. You'll have, you'll have to ask... Um, You'd have to ask the promoters individually. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think, like, obviously with the travel expenses and stuff like that, um, I think that may be a factor. But with um, Gary and Wrestle Carnival, he's looking at all these different characters and to create this beast that's going to be Wrestle Carnival, where it's going to have all these different characters. And it'll be excited to see, um, like, what you do um, in the carnival. But where, where did it all begin? Like, when did you think, right, I'm... I'm going to be a professional wrestler and then later wear a mask for the living. Uh, well, there was quite a big uh, gap between uh, I want to be a wrestler and, ladies and gentlemen, here's the lying kid. Okay. Um, I started watching wrestling when I was maybe seven or eight. Yeah. Um, before then, like before I even saw wrestling on TV, I had um, some wrestling video games, some computer games. I had um, uh, the, what's it called? The... WrestleMania game on the Super Nintendo yeah. and Warzone on the uh, N64. And um, Warzone on the N64 was is the one I played the most at the time. Um, so I was playing played that game for a few months and got got really into it. I really liked the characters and I got to know all the characters. I knew all the characters' names. So one day when I switched on TV and I see oh look and I see wrestling, I was like, this is this is the thing for the game game I play. And it's like <laughs> and i already knew all the characters and like all their names i just and i knew all the names of all the moves and everything it's just like oh this is the video game that i'm really into but now it has an actual story to go with it so it was just super easy for me to um jump in and dive in so it wasn't until i started watching until i was about seven or eight years old that uh, that became a really big fan and i'm just like okay this is what i want to do when i'm older what characters did you like from the game and then when you seen them on TV? Like, it's that Starstruck moment. Uh, I think fav- my favourite character to play of to play of is in the game was probably The Rock. Yeah. But by the time I started watching, watching it, um, none of the main event guys were never really my favourite. My favourite guys were like, um, well, he became a main event guy. Guys like Jericho was yeah. my favourite when I started watching and... Um, Tajiri was never really a main event guy, but he was always one of my favourites as well. Yeah, definitely. Did you, was he ever somebody where you loved playing them on the game, but then when you see him on the show, you're like, actually, I don't really like, especially when you're young and like impressionable and stuff like that. Cause I remember uh, I was a bit similar with, I used to play one of the ECW games and when I actually saw him, I was like, <laughs> I don't really like that guy now. <laughs> um, I suppose when, when Jericho first came to WWF, he was a baby face, but it wasn't yeah. long until he turned ill. And I really didn't, I, I continued as, you know, new games came out, I continued to play as Jericho on the games and I really liked playing with him on the games, but I never liked him on TV because obviously yeah. I wasn't supposed to, he was a baddie. Um, yeah. So I think that's the closest comparison that I can give in that regards. Yeah, I think like, similar with, mine was Kurt Angle, obviously namesake with Kurt. Like, he was, I hated him. I'd always get chanted the Kurt Angle theme tune and stuff like that. And then it's when you get older, you start actually appreciating the body of work a lot more. And so when did you start from playing the video games and watching the TV show to thinking, actually, I want to do this as my profession? Um, Almost immediately after watching on TV, I was hooked pretty quickly and um, pretty much, my entire life up until that point, um, even though it sounds like silly because I was so young, 
but my entire life at that point, I never really had any dreams or aspirations or I, I never knew what I wanted to do when I was older. Yeah. But so when I saw wrestling and it's like, Oh, this is something you can do as an actual job. It was, um, yeah, straight away. That was what I wanted to do. And, um, I didn't even, and like at the time I had no idea there was a wrestling scene in England at all. Yeah. Um, I didn't know for years and years and years after I assumed like when I turn 18, I have to move to America and, <laughs> phone up WWE and be like oh do you, do you, how do I and, and ask Vince how to get involved <laughs> <laughs> that was like my closest comparison I, I had like I had no idea there was a um, British scene or like a Japanese scene or a Mexican scene I had, no, I had no idea there was any other wrestling at all other than that and so how, uh, how did you find out about these scenes so when I uh, entered senior school I was about 12 or 13 and um i made friends with a lad called will who was um he's still wrestling now actually and um i made friends with him because he was um one of the only other people in my class who was a wrestling fan yeah i was, uh, I was about 13 years old and uh one day he said to me he's like i've been to a wrestling training school and i was just like no you haven't <laughs> <laughs> i didn't believe him he, i didn't believe him he's like yeah i did it's um it's round here at this place and he named the place. It was literally less than a five-minute walk away from my house. And I was <laughs> wow. like, I was like, no, you haven't. He was like, yeah, I have. Come, come, meet me there next next Sunday, and uh, I'll show and I'll show it to you. And I was just like, mm. I feel, I, I thought he was winding me up because he knew I was a big fan, and I knew he knew that was what I wanted to do. But um, yeah, I went along, and it turned out there was this building with a ring in and trainees and wrestlers, and it was there under my nose for years like literally <laughs> le less than a five minute walk away from my house it was there for years and i had no idea <laughs> what was your first like experiences training then uh, oh crikey we're going back a bit so i was i'm 31 now so i was i was 13 during my, my first sessions um I, I don't think we did a lot during my first session just running the ropes and um if you think i'm short now i was even shorter back then so i could barely <laughs> barely reached the top rope to run them properly um <laughs> but uh and uh did my first few bumps and that and oh crikey those um first few bumps i had like I, I guess i was so excited to, to um actually get in the ring and do something i had no yeah. idea i'd never really thought about the re reality of um oh actually this probably would hurt um I, this is a bit naive but i remember i was taking my first few bumps and I, I, it was fine at first but i remember there was a, it was like a Sunday morning session and by the time the session finished and I got home like 30 minutes later my back was an absolute <laughs> I probably only took like 15 or 20 bumps or something but and I remember it was the junior classes so it was like ages 13 to 16 I think yeah. um so I was a part of that and so there were every Sunday at 10 o'clock and uh I remember so 10 till 12 so I remember getting home and we're back at like Sunday from 12 o'clock all the way to like Saturday night, my my back was in absolute agony. And I was like, oh my God, I'm in so much pain. <laughs> and come Sunday morning, Sunday morning for the next session, I was just like, I cannot wait to get back there again. <laughs> <laughs> I was not deterred in the slightest. <laughs> oh, that's great to hear. Cause you, you see it with a lot of people, like they'll go and um, like, so you said you didn't think it was gonna be as hard on your back or anything like that. like. The whole conception of oh, it's it's like a trampoline under there and stuff like that and um, like <laughs> when did you start getting used to the bumps and not aching for the week until the next session? Pretty pretty quickly, I think. Yeah. Like maybe, maybe after a few months to a year, you know, once you get to learn to do the stuff safely and you get used to it, and there's a bit of muscle memory, but. Um, but it, it never goes away completely. I'll, I'll have days now when my, my back's hurting. Um, like four or five years ago, I, I took nearly six months off just because my back was so bad. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I did my physio and I had my doctor's appointments and I did my um, MRI scans and all that. And I eventually got better and made a full recovery and um, jumped back to it. So, uh, I don't know where I'm going with this answer. <laughs> <laughs> now, we've taking the bumps and stuff it's good to see that your back's getting a lot better um what was it that was 
like wrong with your back, if you don't mind. So, um, oh, I can't remember any of the technical names to it because it was a little while ago and yeah. um, it's, it's not, but there's, there's so to, much around there. Uh, you got your spine yeah. going down, and you know, you got your vertebrae yeah. between going all the way down, and between that, you got a little bit of like jelly like fluid. Yeah. Um, so basically, as you from what how was explained to me is like as you warm up, um, you know, warm up and get ready for your match or something, yeah. this fluid becomes I don't know if it's inflated or if some extra inju- fluid gets injected into there. Yeah. Um, but it basically pads out, it naturally pads out between the vertebrae. Um, so there's less like so the impact doesn't have as much effect, yeah. as much effect. It's not as and it doesn't damage your spine or your vertebrae as much. But over time, you're wrestling so long, there's been so much wear and tear that the ver- that the fluid between two my vertebrae here and two down there has completely worn away. Oh, wow. It's like none left. Um, so day to day, like not when I'm going about my normal day, there's no fluid between that between those vertebrae. So those grind together more. Yeah, which um, can make it, which gives me a bad back, which makes it ache um so for example when i wake up in the mornings i've been laying down for six seven hours of sleep so in the mornings there's no there's no nothing there at all so my back's really hurting in the morning but before i do a match or before anything else when i'm stretched and warm up that extra bit that would have been extra on top of the normal amount does go to those places and that um pads it up enough um so i've kind of like when people say like uh, just like, oh, my back's hurt and I'm going to take a few, week, a few weeks off and get better before I get back to wrestling. Like some other wrestlers might say that, some other people might say that. Like, but for me, it's the opposite. I have to continue to wrestle <laughs> to keep, to stop my yeah. back from hurting. <laughs> it's like the less I do, the more I hurt. Like the more, the less I do and the, like, the less I work out. And if I have some time off, that's where my back tightens up and that's when it all starts to hurt. But when I get back to it and I start going, that's when it all... Um, like loosens up again and I feel way better. <laughs> <laughs> How have you been feeling during this uh, like lockdown and the pandemic then? Uh, I've been fine. Like I've been doing like, um, I've been keeping like doing my stretches and stuff yeah. and uh, keep, keep warm. And I'm always running around with my kids. I've got a two year old and a uh, five year old. So they keep, keep me keep doing busy. their little energy balls, any machines. Um, yeah, I can barely keep up with them now. <laughs> <laughs> so I know you've, you've kind of gone through a couple of different names during um, your British wrestling period, but where did Lion Kid come from? Where, like, what was the birth of Lion Kid? Um, so I've always looked way younger than I actually am. Like when I was... Why I keep the beard. <laughs> 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 I can't grow a beard. I'm 31 years old and I've never been able to grow a beard in my life. <laughs> it's strange. Like when I, I I had friends back from when I was a teenager, 30, like a 13 year old who had like full on fucking beard, and I'm <laughs> Mr. <laughs> so I don't have that luxury. But uh, I overcompensate with this, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so I've always looked way younger than I actually am. So usually to the point where um, when I was 20, people would think I was like 14, 15. It was like, it was like that, that big a gap. When I was 25, people would think I was 18. Um, so when I was starting to get to wrestle on shows, when I was um, starting doing prop, um, proper shows, when I was between 16 and 18, uh, I think a lot of promoters were put off booking me. Like even if they liked me as a talent. Yeah. They were put off because it looks like they've got a child wrestling their um their grown, their grown man in you know so that it doesn't look very good. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think that held me back a little bit at the start. Um, so it was, but so, but I did have people suggestions like oh just just put a mask on. But at first I was like I really really didn't like the idea of putting a mask on. I just wanted to be me. I just wanted to be myself, and I had yeah. no idea what um character would do but yeah years later i started to think about it a little bit more and um some promoters did want it to start booking me but they were just like but they wanted me in a mask 
I was just like, okay, well, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to really put some thought into it and do it exactly and do it right. You know what I mean? Not just like, oh, like that name would do, that mask would do. Let's just go out there and do it because this isn't what I want to do. Yeah. I just want to do So let's just, you know what I mean? Let's just make it far away just to just, uh, get the book in. So, but, so I really put some thought into it and, um, yeah, came up with got the name Lion Kid. I had the name Tiger Kid to start with because I thought yeah. Tiger Mark, Tiger Kid. Yeah. Um, but then it was suggested to me the name Lion Kid instead because li- <laughs> bizarrely lions are somehow slightly more British than tigers are. <laughs> I'd say that. Like, you got the three lions. Like, Yeah. Yeah. So I'd, that, I'd that was that. kind of the thing. And I, was, I, I wanted to be, I, I, I wanted to be the British version of Dragon Kid. <laughs> I, I, I always thought he was fantastic, and he was a little guy like me, and he was amazing talent, amazing high flyer, and his look is incredible. Like I always loved his mask and all his gear and stuff. He always looked by. He, he was he was a superstar. So I was like, oh, I want to be the, the British version of Dragon Kid. There's there's no uh, there's no one like that in England at the moment. Maybe I can maybe I can fill that role. Maybe there's a space for me. Um, in that regard, so it became at first it became something I was apprehensive about and something that I didn't like the idea of. Yeah, then it's like, hang on, this is potentially something that um, that has a lot of legs, something that I can make something real of. This could potentially be like the next step in my career. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, like again, stand, standing out as well, it gives you. That little bit extra, I think, because you've put so much thought into it. Like, I've just been sat here, just like admiring just how nice the mask actually is, um, up close and personal. Like, um, did it take? Oh, some yeah, getting... I'd love to give this, give this, give them all a close look. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd feet... love to take credit for the design, but it wasn't, it wasn't me that designed it. <laughs> <laughs> Who was that designed it? Story I've not told before. Um, so if, um. If you remember me from, I know we were chatting before we started filming. You said you remember me a little bit from IPW UK way yeah. back in the day. Um, that gear I wore on that show, which is the big fluffy furry gear, you remember? I had the big fluffy trousers yeah. and the masks that had a much, 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 much more simplistic design. Um, that was designed by me and a friend at the time. And um, then after I got into the Dragon Gate UK shows, um, we were like in talks with them a little bit more when like, yeah. the Dragon Gate promote work. So I had an in with them and um, I said to them one, and we spoke to them one day and we're like, and we say, and we asked, we asked um, to get in touch with their gear designers. Yeah. And we're like, can you make us some gear for Lion Kid? Can you make me some gear? But can you do a design as if Lion Kid was like a, well almost like as if he was a japanese wrestler and a member of your dragon gate roster like properly what would the lion kid look like in dragon gate if he originated in dragon gate and um yeah they, they came back with this design and um so i thought at the time their gear makers were also their designers yeah. but that wasn't the case this gear my entire gear my entire look it was designed by shima and shingo and dragon kids wow. and although they kind of all collabed together to draw the design and put it together so it was actually made by like pretty, the design was designed by them like most of the roster which was just incredible it was just like that's amazing i just i you know, just couldn't imagine that could you like way back in the day like saying it's like oh your gear is going to be designed by all these people and just like wow well you mentioned dragon kid and there you when you're trying to think of this character you're like i want to be the british dragon kid and then he's got a hand in creating your identity <laughs> now and it kind of comes full circle yeah it was really cool i was hoping that was one of the guys i was hoping to work with or maybe tag team with when i was out there but um Dragon Kid, he, he was pretty much the only one of the only main members of the roster I never got to work <laughs> with. Um, but, uh, but I still got to work with so much of the other talent. So I was obviously super grateful and super happy with uh, those opportunities. So I can't be like, like oh, I, never, I can't be begrudging it too much. I can't be mad about it. <laughs> no, no. How did like Dragon Gate come about then for you? 
so um, I did the dark match on the first Dragon Gate UK show in 2009. Was that against Stix? It was, yeah. yes. And um, then, uh, so I kind of had a little win after that match. But then um, in IPW, actually, uh, so we did the uh, weekend tour the next year. Yeah. 2010 but between that time i had a match in ipw with uh mark haskins yeah which um got which i got a really really good response on and which the um people at dragon gate and the promoter in the booker really likes that match so they wanted to book me they wanted to book that match on their show yeah so and um, so because of the weekend i did the one match of haskins and they asked me who i wanted to wrestle on the other uh, uh for the other day of the weekend and they gave me a list of people um that uh that I potentially go get that I could potentially pick from. Yeah. Um it wasn't a guarantee but uh it wasn't a guarantee I would get to wrestle one of those but they they wanted a, they wanted my feedback. They wanted to know who I'd like to work with. Um for, unfortunately Dragon Kid wasn't on that list. <laughs> <laughs> Although I might have been so nervous for that match I might have said no I might have not asked for it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I asked for Yoshino. Um, he was probably the uh, second guy on the list. He was like their top guy at the time. He was their Dream Gate champion, the yeah. Dream, Open Dream Gate champion. So he had their top, top title at the time as well. So it was like all the more reason to ask for that match. And, you know, they might say no, they might say yes, they might take me off the show entirely. But whatever, <laughs> I still got the match with uh, Mark Haskins the day before. Super happy for uh, any opportunity like that. So I did the weekend. I think I think the weekend was in October or or late September, something like yeah. that. Um, so we did the weekend the show, did the match with Haskins, went well. Did the match with Yoshino, I think it went well. They they were happy with me. And um, I think Haskins did a tour for Dragon Gate um, the year before, like okay. in Japan, and they were looking to bring some more people over, um, some more British talent over, um, based on his success there. And uh, they liked my match with him and they liked my match with So they're like, would you like to come over and do a tour? And I'm like, absolutely, I would. And um, and I thought about it some more. And it's like, I thought, and I thought about it some more. And it's like, when am I going to get the opportunity to go over there again? So I went back to them and to be like, can I not just come over for a tour? Can I come over and also um, join your dojo as well? Um, so what would have been like, a six week tour or whatever yeah. and into a three month trip and after that the Dragon Gate weekend literally two weeks later I was on a plane to Japan to spend okay. three months yeah so luckily they said yes and I got to spend um, like nearly two months in their dojo and doing bits and pieces of shows uh, in between as well so yeah it works out really cool it was really fun what was it like working, like training in a dojo then? Because they say that they're the toughest places to go um, if you want to be a pro wrestler. What was the Dragon Gate dojo like for you? It was very, very, very hard work. <laughs> it was exhausting. Um, I don't know. I like obviously you try and put on a brave face. Yeah. But um, this is the, the story I like to tell. Um, is uh, from my first session there, my first training session there, because I, I think it sums it up the best. So um, obviously the, Jap the Japanese dojos are known for doing a lot of um, fitness drills, press-ups and squats and blah, blah, blah. And um, during my first session, we did one particular um, press-up drill, which uh, was really bad. We did the one way where um, you're in pairs yeah. and you take turns holding each other's feet up and the other person does press ups and then you swap so your swap in is meant to be you'll, you get a little bit of break but it's not really a break because you're also holding the other person's feet yeah. and that and those shoulders so so it started out it's like okay 10 10 reps each swap okay now 20 reps each swap now 30 reps each swap and um now, I was all right up to this point I was just like okay this is probably not going on for too much longer and you don't want to ask you don't want to be like Oh, this is getting. I'm getting tired. How much longer? How many more sets are we doing? <laughs> and they're like, okay, forty reps, fifty reps, sixty reps each. Swap in. And I was just like, Jesus. I was, I was, and when it swapped in, I was just like, I hope this is the last one. I don't think I, at this point, I don't think I can manage seventy reps. 
<laughs> and um, and you cut, it's not like and so they said next set back down to 50 reps I was like okay that's a little bit less okay next set back down to 40 reps and I was like okay maybe we're gonna go go down tens again down to 10 and then that'll be it and then we did 10 reps and we're like okay now back up to 20 reps and at this point I'm like oh my god I'm really <laughs> hoping this is going all the way back up to 60 again and um <laughs> And we did, um, and I, I don't know how I got through it. I just sheer willpower and like, not like, I was like the only foreign student they've ever had in their dojo up to that point. Like they've never accepted an invite from everyone, from anyone outside oh, Japan wow. before. And I was like, and most of the students there were, were quite new. They'd only yeah. been there for like um, three or four months at that point. And I was like, and they seen me there and like, I know some of them knew me from the Dragon Gate UK shows and they knew I was coming like, um, and they knew I'd had a few years experience at that point. And I'm like, oh God, it's like, I really don't want to embarrass myself. <laughs> I've been the only one here that cannot get through this drill. So through, uh, through sheer, like utter willpower, I forced my way through it. I got to the, got to the very end and, um, we did the rest of the session and that was fine. And, um, I slept in the dojo as well. They have, um, they got their, the way it was laid out, they got their rings. They got two or three rings, like in the biggest part of it, big shot. And then they go through and they got the kitchen area and stuff. And then they got um, a couple of bedrooms. Yeah. Started about the place with, with, with all, which all have like five or six beds in and some bunk beds and things. Um, Cause a lot of the talent sleep there between the shows as well. When, after they um, travel, like, cause they travel around in their big tour bus. Yeah. Um, so I get through the rest of the session and uh, I sleep that night, <laughs> dead to the world. And um, I chat to the dude that took the uh, session the next day. Excuse me. And he was like, oh, ask me how I'm feeling. And I'm just like, and I thought, and you kind of think to yourself, I'm just like, do you just put on a brave, brave face and I just say I'm okay? And I thought, no, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest about it at this point. I'm gonna be like. I'm gonna be like, oh my, my chest is very sore. And it's like, oh, yesterday we did we did we did a lot of press ups, and he was just like, he just goes, mm, okay. And um and he was kind of quiet for a bit. And I was like, oh no, maybe I shouldn't have said that. And, and then he goes, do you know how many press ups you did? And I was just like, no, I I completely lost count. Like I tried to keep track at first, yeah, but. It, it, but about halfway through, all my mental energy had to be just to getting through it, not to doing math in my head. <laughs> so I was just, just like, no, I have no idea how many we did. And uh, I think we did 1,200 press-ups in that trip. <laughs> and so we did 1,200. And I was just like, I just thought to myself, that is the most press-ups I've ever done in a single session in my life, probably by more than double. I think some of the hardest sessions I've done in England had have had like maybe three or four hundred press ups in in the entire in the entire yeah. three hour training session, not twelve hundred in one single drill. Um, yeah. But I was just like, but training again today, and uh, we started the training session that day, and I was like. I'm really, I really hope we don't have to do another press up drill because my chest is so sore. I'm not sure I can get out one, let alone another. <laughs> and, Amazing. Um, there was no press up drills for the next at least probably about a week of training. We did lots, we did lots of other drills that were just as tiring, but um, luckily my chest got to recover by the time it wraps around to that again. <laughs> Sound, sounds intense but it sounds like an amazing opportunity as well and to be the first like non-japanese attendee of the uh dragon gate dojo surely that leaves you some some sense of pride yeah for sure i think i think it's really cool I and mean, they've had um quite a few other people there since but um like i think maybe i i just asked yeah. like there were i was going there anyway like for, for the tour and to wrestle so i just asked and um that's not usually something um like wrestlers or like anyone's kind of encouraged to do yeah because but i just i just thought like you know um this might be the one and only chance i get to go i might go i might, I might go there and do the tour and they'll be like 
actually we did like him on those other shows but he's not working out or yeah. so we're not going to bring him in like you, like you don't know what's going to happen um they might decide i'm just not their cup of tea at that point so so just like if i'm going to go i'm going to make the most of it do you think that the training made you a better athlete and the tour made you a better wrestler um Yes, probably. It's, 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 it's hard to pinpoint, you, you know, you learn so much over so much time. You kind of, you remember the lessons, but you don't really remember where you learn, where, yeah. where you learn each thing or who you learn each thing from. But yeah, I, I definitely walked away from that trip better. And, um, and I mostly know that from feedback after, because a lot of people after when I came back, they'd be like, oh, you know, my profile was up a bit. And maybe it was just because I had more eyes on me. Like, people yeah. were, like, look, were looking at me that never looked at me before. But I was getting, um, like, greater feedback at that point. Um, so I'm assuming I got better. I like to think I got better. <laughs> <laughs> Stepping off that plane and everyone's like, what's happened to Lion Kid? Because you're just, like, absolutely <laughs> off from doing 1,200 press-ups a day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what was... I didn't even have the rest of it. <laughs> I, I, tell you, I tell you what, if, if we got time, if we got time for this story, yeah, uh, there was there was one guy that was there. I'm, I'm not going to name his name because I don't want to embarrass him, and I, I think he's still a member of the roster. But it was um, before he became a main member of the roster. He was um, I, can't, I can't remember what he did wrong, but he was getting um, uh, punished for something, and um, and his punishment was he had to during the training session he had to do squats. Yeah. Um, continuously outside the ring and uh, the training session started at like 10 in the morning or something I don't remember and uh, I, I get in the ring and like he's normally taking part in the session and uh, but he's just out there doing squats just to, to, without stopping he's just going and um, we do the uh, like I think it was a three or four hour session that day so we did the session and he's going the entire time and um, I do the session I go out Finish the session. I go. I have a shower. You know, I yeah. go have some food. I, I can't. I come back through towards um, the bedroom. My door. The dorm I'm in, and um, he's still there doing squats. <laughs> and I just, I just could not believe it. And and uh, he, he, I can't remember how many done. I can't remember if it was three thousand or five thousand, but Jesus. he did those without stopping. Wow. And uh, yeah, I, I think if I remember correctly, he got. When he came back from the, sh- um, some of the lads stayed out after a show and got a bit yeah. drunk, and he came back to the uh, the dojo a bit drunk. He woke up some of the senior members, and so that was his pun. That was some of uh, that was his punishment. But yeah, like he, like that guy, he was described to me as just like, oh, I remember um, yeah, you, he was described to me as having a weak heart. It was like no, no, he's he's like ah, oh, he's no good. He's got a weak heart. You need to have a strong, you know. That's what I say. It's fighting spirit. You got to have a strong heart to, to do this to make it a grand game. It's like oh, he has weak heart. And I'm watching this guy do thousands of squats from for hours on end, and just like this is this is how high your standard is that that this guy you'd consider to have a weak heart. It's like wow. Put him against anyone in England, like. Like, if he's got a weak heart, don't ask me to do squats next to him because <laughs> cause I'm, I'm not going to keep up with that. <laughs> Definitely like, not. Like, thing. <laughs> it's, it's just on another level. Like, the discipline and, like, the hard work they're putting. I think that's probably why they all, like, you see, like, Nagata and people where they're in the 50s but still absolutely massive because... The training is just another level. It's just, they've just got the meat on them. It just builds up. They just it's just pure power muscle. And it's like even if you like you look at some of those bigger guys and you're like, oh, this they're not ripped. Some yeah. of them don't look ripped. They're just like tanks, yeah. absolute tanks. And they're so strong, so strong. I remember um, doing a drill with um, not a drill, it's a, like a warm up exercise and. Um, for people that aren't familiar, there's um, of neck rolls. It's when you you put your head on the floor and you um, go up onto your tiptoes and you roll your head backwards and forwards and it puts a bit of pressure and weight on your neck yeah. and strengthens it a bit. So they've got one that I'd never done until I was um, in Japan where um, you'd lay down on the ring 
and you hang your head and your neck and like like a little bit of your upper part of the body outside the ring and then you'd have uh, your partner putting their palms on your forehead and they put the pressure down and you move your head up and down against that pressure oh and uh, it is really really hard <laughs> really <laughs> and your neck will ache, ache big time when you do it but you eventually build up and you get used to it and you get stronger and um I'll, for one one time um the person taking the session was um cyber kong yeah i'm not sure if you're familiar with him but he's a sh- he's a short lad he's not much taller than me but he's wide he's as wide as he is tall. he's like he's really strong and um so i had, so i was putting the pressure on his head for it and uh he just kept saying he just kept like more more and more and it got to the point where i was literally pushing as hard as i could i mean i don't think i'm a weak guy but i was literally pushing as hard as i could and he was like like it was nothing. It was like it was like almost picking me off the picking me up off the floor. <laughs> How did you find it? How did you find being on the other end and having to do them? Um, it was fine. I think I think um, like the the way they kind of do it, they they for some of the things they kind of push you to failure. Yeah, it's like not that they want you to fail, but they. They just want to know you're working hard. Yeah. So, if, for example, if you're to do a squat drill, if someone works their absolute hardest and pushes their way through and does their absolute best and collapses on the floor after, but they only manage 200, they'd be impressed with that person. Yeah. They'd be like, yes, we want, we, they'd want to push that person forward more. And then if person B does 400 squats, and after just goes, well, I could do more, but I don't want to. And they're not tired and they just had enough. They'd, they'd look down on that person. They'd, yeah, um, they'd, they'd, they'd not want to work with that person anymore. They'd want to, you know, they'd be concentrating more on uh, person A in that example. So it's not like Cybercom was like, you know, working against me, like trying to get me to fail. But, you know, he made sure I was working hard. <laughs> and I think that's why... Again, when you were like, do I just put on a brave face or do I tell them like my chest are hurting from the press ups? The fact you was honest and was like, I'm aching now proves that you've pushed your body to the limit to them, so they will respect it. Whereas if you did play Billy Big Bollocks, you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine. I guarantee you'd have been doing press ups that next session. <laughs> Yeah, there was maybe. Oh my gosh, I hope not. Maybe. Oh god, that would have really shot myself in the foot. That would not. <laughs> That would have been like, oh, we're not pushing him hard enough. <laughs> oh my gosh, I didn't think of that. Yeah, so good job you was honest. Um, <laughs> in terms of like some of the matches, like one that I want to speak about, you and Pac, like two English boys out in Japan wrestling. How did how was that for you? Oh, it was really cool. He wasn't there for the first. Um, as I say, the tour was like um, that I was going to do. Yeah. That, that six week was I think six or eight weeks long. I can't remember. But I asked to do the dojo time, so we had the dojo time before the tour. So I thought yeah. it'd be a nice way to settle in and get to know their style a little bit more. And you know, it was a unique opportunity. Um, so the, the first month or so I was there, uh, Pack wasn't. So um, yeah, he turned up uh, a couple of weeks into it, and um, I had one of my first matches in Japan against him as well. So that was really cool. I'd never worked with him before on a show. Um, I did a little bit of training with him way back before, but um, this was my first time on a proper show um, against Pac. And it's like it was kind of funny that two English guys were having their first match together in Japan. <laughs> and uh, so that was really cool. We so I'm sure everyone would agree with me when um, they say that Pac is an incredible talent, one of the absolute best. And like even at the time. Uh, in Japan, um, speaking to some of the, um, what's it called? Like some of the uh, like senior staff members yeah. and like folks and that, they even, even they, they said, Pax, one of our best guys, like he's the best guy on our roster. Like they even thought he was better than some of like a lot of their own guys, which is, um, it just says a lot, I feel. Yeah, definitely. And I think like his return after leaving WWE and going, 
back to Dragon Gate as a first place and doing all that. That just shows like how much like Pack meant to them and how much they meant to Pack. And what were some of your other like standout moments whilst out there? Like when you're looking back, whether it was opponents or passing matches or even the crowd reception, like what stands out from your time in Japan? Uh, probably getting to wrestle Shingo. Yeah. One of the high one of the highlights. He's to me, he is their best guy. He is their number one guy. Yeah. And uh, he's he's so good, so easy to work with. Him and um BB Hulk, who I got to wrestle more than once actually. He was one of the only guys there I got to wrestle more than once. Yeah. And he's so easy to work with uh, and so much fun that when um the shows went back to England, when I the next year when they did a tour of England again. They're like, oh, when they were asking about my trip out there and everything, and uh, oh, who did I like to work with, blah, blah, blah. Hulk, BB Hulk was the first person on the list. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, they booked me against him in England. And out of all the shows, uh, out of all the um, uh, matches I did for Dragon Gate UK, even the ones for the tours after that, I think my match with BB Hulk is uh, probably one of the best. Definitely one of my favourites. What is it about BB uh, Hulk and that match that stands out as one of your favourites? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of a hard, hard question. I just, I just felt, I just felt like everything was on point. Yeah. Like he was, he was easy to work with. Um, like he was a, he, and he was um, not that the other people weren't, but not that the other people weren't or that I ever got any negative impression, but he seems like genuine, genuinely excited to work me and genuinely excited to work yeah. for the match. It was like, it was more back and forth, like ideas wise. And um, I don't know. I, th- I think we just gelled more. I think there was just a more, there was a chemistry between us that, um, that I didn't necessarily have right away with some of the other people that I only got to work a, li- uh, a little bit less with. Yeah. Was it that tour that you worked Shima when the like the UK tour afterwards? I think so. Yes, <laughs> it was a little it all kind of blurs together a little bit. <laughs> uh, yeah, we did a three day tour um, a little bit after, and I think Shima what might have been the final match yeah. on that tour specifically. Excuse me. So, what was it like wrestling Shima? Ah, uh, he's. Uh, he he's he's there like he's the leader of the locker room. Yeah. He's the number one guy. He's in charge. Like whatever Shima says, absolutely goes. Like even like all the, like the head staff members and like all the people that are technically the owners and above him, they listen to Shima. He yeah. is man. He's he's basically in charge, even if he's not in charge. Um, so I was really nervous for that match and just like, because if, if the one match that you don't want to mess up on, <laughs> you know, it's it's against him. So I was, su- I was super nervous for that one. But um, yeah, it went fine and it got a good response and um, he, he seemed happy with it, um, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, the thing, even if you, um, that's, that's a little bit of the culture over there. It's like, even if you upset them, you'll never know. <laughs> yeah. So what happened with Dragon Gate UK in the end then? How do you mean? Like, hasn't it stopped? Like, they're not doing this, as many shows? Uh, or... They stopped running. Um, maybe 2014 might have been the last show. I think it's just because a lot of the roster members kind of left. Yeah. Like, Rick J left and Pac left and um, uh, oh, a whole bunch of, like, Shingo left and, like, uh, Tazawa left and it's just like all the kind of all the build up and all the storylines that were there previously had kind of gone yeah so I had nowhere to go with it um so the plan was to go back to it eventually but um yeah it, it never it just never kind of materialized in the end but I think it was a miracle we got was it like five tours to yeah. give, begin with like the, the first the first show was like going to be like a one-off thing 
and it was it was never going to go anywhere from there but it was like it got such a great response and there was so much hype and there's so much demand and it's like okay next next year not even that long next year yeah we're gonna bring it back again but this time for two shows and then the next year we're gonna bring it back this time for three shows and um yeah but i, I, don't, I don't know well i don't know why uh why i would have loved to have done more <laughs> obviously <laughs> And yeah. uh, obviously, a lot more UK talent got a chance to sh- to shine as well, which is always very good. Yeah, and, we, uh, we... There's even more talent in England now, which I think could do very, very well on um, for some of those shows, and especially for Dragon Gate, and could yeah. potentially do well over there in Japan as well. Maybe, probably even better than I did. <laughs> <laughs> like, because I, I know you did the Noah shows as well when Noah came over to the UK and. Um, do you think like there's still that market for whether it's Dragon Gate or All Japan or Noah to be coming over here? I know New Japan do quite a lot with Rev Pro, but do you think that would really help the wrestling scene worldwide? Obviously, when pandemics all well and said and done, do you think like a a Dragon Gate return or a, or Noah would be beneficial? Um, yeah, definitely. There's they huge brands and with like huge stars there's always there's always there's always a demand fans want to see talent there's never that's never going to change fans want to see wrestling they want to see their favorite wrestlers they want to see the biggest stars that that's never going to go away there's always going to be a market for it um it, it's just it's just a matter of uh if if it happens it could happen at any time you know but it's just a matter of if it does yeah, I don't, I don't think um, I don't think it's been. I'm not sure what it's being held back by, or what it could potentially be held back by in the future. But there being a demand for it and there being a market for it is, I don't think that's going to be. I don't think that's one of those things that yeah. uh, is going to be holding it back. Now, hope hopefully, like once this is done, everybody will be wanting to tour everywhere because everybody's been so restricted for so long, and um, it'll be like we've all broken free of the asylum. So once you got back to Japan, like how thing, how did things change for you on the uh, British scene? Like what happened next for Lion Kid? Um, what happened next for like? Well, not a lot happened for Lion for Lion Kid on the British scene. Actually, not a lot happened next for Lion Kid in general. So I like I did the trip to Japan. Uh, yeah. I think it's three months between um, I think uh, between October and December. I think I actually got home off the plane on December 23rd and did all my Christmas shopping at Christmas Eve. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so a bit of a break, Christmas break after that, have some time off, get back into the new year. OK, what well, new year, 2010, what's next for what, what I'm thinking? What's next for me? What, what's next for Lion Kid? And um, so I speak. So I was speaking to the um, like the Dragon Gay UK um, promoter and their European rep rep. And they were asking me about my experience and did I like it there, blah, blah, blah. Would I be interested in going back? Is that something they can um, start to arrange? And um, in the middle of that conversation, I get an email from a group in France called WrestleStars. Okay. And they were um, very interested in me and uh, um, for their TV show. And I hadn't heard of Wrestle Stars up to that point, so I looked them up, and they they had these huge shows in France, literally every, two shows a week, every weekend, in in uh, literally in arenas, um, in front of thousands of people. Yeah, like, the, the average show was at least two thousand people, and. Wow. Um, so I decided to take that opportunity instead. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I was like, okay, like Japan was really ap- appealing, and it was always my dream, and it would have been great to go back and maybe build off my first tour there. Now that I understood it a little bit more, and I was a little more confident working with those guys, and I learned so much from them, and I knew I could learn so much more from them. Um, but the, this France opportunity, um, they wanted me there every weekend of the year. Um, so I could get, so I wasn't gone, I wasn't gone six weeks at a time, three times a year I was gone. So, so I always had the weekdays at home. Uh, so I was able to spend time with my family and friends during that time. Um, 
and France is it's a much shorter trip to France. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. So uh, like three hours on the is uh, like a two hour train to London and three hours on the Eurostar. Um, and like big arena shows and the, the money was really good as well. And it's like, I, I think this is my next opportunity. Um, so to, to go back to the part I said, it wasn't necessarily an opportunity for Lion Kid because they wanted to rebrand me. Okay. How did you take that? Because you've just, again, you just spoke about you've had Sheeran and Dragon Kid like working on this Lion Kid design and you've just got back from Japan and talking about going back and like, uh, we want you. Actually, <laughs> Shima and Dragon Kid and all those people didn't work on this design. I didn't get this mask until 2011. Okay. So it must have been the year before, but I'd still worked very hard on the Lion Kid character, and uh, I thought I had big potential. I was happy, ha- I was very happy with it, and I wanted to expose it. And this was an opportunity to expose it to a expose it to a massive, massive audience. But they, um, Wrestle Stars, the group, were in the middle of working on a television deal and a yeah. television contract, and they needed to own all their own IP. Ah. Uh-huh. So unless I wanted to give up the rights to Lion Kid, which I definitely didn't want to do, <laughs> and they, and I think they wanted to create their own character anyway. Yeah. But they came up. The show was called Wrestle Stars, and they had me be W S Kid. Okay. Um. How, so, how did you find like the adapting to that? Was there any change from Lion Kid to W S Kid? Loads, loads. It's an entirely different character. You don't. I'm not just swap one mask for another, and yeah. I'm, I'm still the same thing. I was entirely. I, I made it entirely different. Like, not. It's not even just a case of changing. I was like, oh, I'm going to swap this move for that move. Now I'm a different wrestler. I changed my characteristics, my mannerisms, um, your your movements. Every you, you change everything. You build. You build something new from the ground up. Like. The way I like to say, you, you, what I say to, it, to anyone that asks me, that asks me about like how to make the character, like how to, you, I always say to them, you don't know what your character is is yet until you go out, go out there and do it. Yeah. It's like your your first ten shot, your your first 10, 15, 20 shows as this new character, you won't know what this character is, but over time it will develop naturally, and. That, and so, and so as long as you pay attention to what work, what works and what doesn't, it'll all come about naturally and uh, to a point where it will become second nature and it'll become comfortable and you'll know and you will become that character to the point where you won't have to think about it. You'll just be able to naturally react as that character. And um, as I said, I did the, those French shows every weekend. So it, uh, for almost every weekend for that entire year, I probably did. 100 plus shows over there yeah. um between 2010 2011 um so it probably took about two or three months to i felt like of like okay i've nailed exactly what the character is and um yeah and what it needs to be for this for this product and uh yeah and they liked me to the they, they liked me enough that they had me back every every weekend i wasn't the only british talent on those shows they had um they had uh, probably like 10 or so different British guys that were there mm-hmm. over the time I was there. But some people, they bring in some people and they'd be like, oh, this person's not working out. And then, then they'd take them away and be like, but in the end, there was a core of maybe five or six British guys that were there every weekend uh, along with me. So that was really cool because uh, got to make some friends and we had our own little group hanging oh, out. It was kind of like my first taste of... Um, this is what it's like for real to be a professional wrestler wrestling for like a huge company and traveling yeah. all the time like that, that was that was my job at that point that was my job that was i at that point like even though I'd, i've been to japan and um i've done like five or six other countries at that point maybe this to me felt the felt for the first time that like this is my actual job i could say like I am a professional wrestler. That is my job. That is my career. I'm not doing one show a month for for twenty or thirty quid mm-hmm. and calling myself a professional wrestler. Which um, I suppose technically, if you're getting paid to do it, you are that. But I always kind of I was never comfortable. 
say, saying that at that point. Semi-professional. Yeah, I, 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 I kind of I cringe. At, like, I imagine myself saying that at that point and kind of cringe a little bit. <laughs> um, <laughs> but at that point, I think it was fair to say, like, yes, like this is me. This is my job. This is this is it. Wow. And uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun. A lot of fun that year. That year. What? Is there anything that stands out from your time in France then? Um, I think just the experience overall. To say it just, just it felt like it was the first time I felt like it's like oh, this is my dream come true. Yeah. This is what I obviously when I, when I first started wrestling, I didn't know any other wrestling outside WWE. But what I am what I always imagined is. Being there was like you're wrestling in big arenas in front of thousands of people, um, getting good money and ha- ha- having having a good time, and that that's what it was for an entire almost every weekend that year. I was there, and uh, yeah, it was so much fun. What made it come to an end? So it was my back actually, <laughs> <laughs> my my back, the um, wear and tear over that time. That's when my um, back started to play up, yeah. and uh, that's when um, I started to go to the doc. That's when I went to the doctors and I did the MRI, my first MRI scan, and they discovered the um, the bits I was explaining earlier, yeah. like uh, between my my vertebrae. That's when they discovered that. So I had um, about six months off at that point, and um, I, th- I think that the, that the company kind of moved on without me because you know six months and then you know they're working on the tv stuff you know you know they kind of moved on without me and at that point when i came back i wanted to come back onto the british scene and i wanted to come back as lion kid again i kind of felt that itch to be lion kid again um for the first time in a very long time yeah like, probably first time in nearly eight probably like 18 to 20 months wow what was that like then? Like, what was the return of the Lion Kid like? Um, difficult. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was tough because I think not only because at that point I'd been away so long, yeah, that I think kind of the British wrestling scene moved on without me as well. And um, so getting back in and like kind of reintroducing myself and like, well, was was tough. It, it was it was difficult to get out of that at first, but. A few people that knew me gave me some opportunities, and um, XWA specifically was a big one. Yeah, and probably still to, to the date one of my favourite places I've ever worked. Um, and Gary, which Gary would notice, he's, he's got a close relationship with them. And uh, yeah, it kind of spiralled a little bit for them. But at that at that point for me, um, with the wrestling stuff, I, I came back like my back was hurting so much that I had to stop. So by the time I came back, I'm just like, I don't know how this is going to go. Like, maybe I'll do one match and my back would just revert back to the beginning again. And, and that yeah. would be my career done. Like, because I wouldn't, I was barely able to walk and get about without being in absolute agony. Um, so, and I, I'm being so young as well. So in my mid, mid twenties, I'm just like, I cannot live the rest of my life like this. <laughs> I can't have another 60 years like this or worse. So if my back gets worse again, I'm going to be done. Yeah. Um, so I think at that point, I not like I not like I necessarily did beforehand, but at that point, I never took anything for granted. Yeah. My like my priorities kind of changed because at that point, it wasn't just about going out there and pushing myself the hardest, and it's all about my my career in the long term. I have to do well for my career in the long term. To the point, it ch- my mindset shifted. Be like, I don't know if this is going to be my last match. Let's go out there and have some fun. Yeah. And because my mindset was, let's go out there and have some fun. I wasn't. Ever, I, it's kind of stopped. It kind of fixed me being nervous about it because beforehand I had a big problem with uh, nerves in matches and yeah. oh my god my. If I, go, if I do something wrong, that's going to mess up my whole career and I'm not going to get any more opportunities, blah, blah, blah. So I was so terrified of that happening that in some cases it kind of came self, like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. Like I was nervous that I was messed up 
that I would mess up. So I would mess up because I was nervous. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so that's cycle. Kind of and made it worse. But I got to this point where I was like, um, my priority now is to have fun. So I wasn't worried about messing up. And because I wasn't worried about messing up, I didn't mess up. And I just went out there and I had fun. And I think the audience, and then the audience kind of saw that I was out there and I was having fun. And they were like, and I think they were like, oh, I want to have fun with him. And they kind of came along with the ride. I like came along the ride with me. And I was getting better and better responses. Yeah. And um, I was getting more and more over. And I was just like, and then it, it just it just clicked in my something just over almost overnight something just clicked in my brain and it was just like I, I've been doing as I was saying a minute ago you, you don't know what your character is until you've until yeah. you go out there and you do it and at that point at that point that's when it finally kicked even though I'd been doing Lion Kid and I thought I knew what that character was and he was do oh you know he was doing reasonably well up until that point as that set fixed character. At that point was when it really clicked and was like, no, actually, this is what the Lion Kid character really is. This yeah. is the version of me. Because that's, that's what all it is. It's just like the Lion Kid character was previously this one version of me. But no, this is the true, this is the everyday version of me. This isn't the nervous version of me that's, you know, pushing, you know, that's worried about messing up. This is, this is more the every more like this is more like the real life version of me like i am every, like i am every day of my life yeah. and that, that clicking when that clicked in your, your mind it made such a huge difference and it's it was it's kind of it's kind of weird i was i don't want to say i was putting in less effort because i still was going out there like i still wanted to have a good match i still wanted to entertain and i did but where i wasn't uh nervous about anything go, going wrong and i was having i, I overall I was performing better I suppose yeah. in a roundabout way I wasn't working quite as hard because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wasn't like trying to earn my next opportunity I was just there to have fun yeah um but even but despite that I've been getting better reactions it opens the door for more opportunities that I probably wouldn't have got otherwise yeah definitely what opportunities are those that open then um I, I don't want to say uh, it's hard to pinpoint any specific yeah. um, one thing, but basically my schedule just got way busier overall. Yeah. To the point where um, I was at, at that point, I'd previously started my family and um, we're, I had my, and we're like, we're getting ready to have our first child. And, um, and it was like for the first time in that point, um, it was like, maybe, this could start to be my living again. Yeah. It was basically my living in, in, when I was in France, I was making enough money to live off, but I was living at home with my parents. Yeah. Um, like I was still with my girlfriend. I did eventually marry them that I'm married to now, but you know, it was, it was early, it was early, an early point in our relationship. Um, you never really know where it's, where it's going at that point, but yeah. we, we were very happy together, but you never know, do you? Um, yeah. But at that, at that point, but making a living in wrestling when you're living at home with your parents and making a living in wrestling when you have a wife and child support. <laughs> Two different uh, things. Worlds. Worlds, worlds, worlds apart. But as my schedule got busier, it changed to the point where actually maybe I can pretty soon make a living and actually be able to support my family yeah. doing so. And... Um, yeah, now we've got two kids, and um, I'm not quite supporting um, my family on my own. But I was, I'm doing well enough that my wife was able to go down to only working part time hours. Oh, brilliant! Uh, she only works, she only works two to three days a week now, although she's furloughed at the moment. But um, and I'm not working either. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was well, previous to all this, we were we were at that point where I was busy enough that. Yeah, okay, we're making enough money that um, we can get by, we can pay the bills, we can pay the mortgage, we can, you know, feed the kids and that and have a bit left over fun money yeah. and you know, he has to work part time. So right. that's kind of like the ultimate goal is to be able to have so she can walk away walk away from her job completely. 
Yeah. And I can just support support them through wrestling 100%. Amazing. Like, you mentioned British wrestling changing um, from, obviously, because you had that six months off, but you had a year in uh, France, and before that you had, um, like, the three, three months in Japan and stuff like that. So it's been a good couple of years. Who were some of the people that you wrestled upon your return that you really enjoyed working with? Um, oh my gosh, I'm trying to think. Um, getting uh, I think I was mostly excited to get back and wrestle some new talent because I, I knew the thing moved on at so much, so much yeah. at that point that I knew there was going to be so many new people that I haven't worked with. Um, of course, it was nice to go back and, and wrestle um, Haskins again and like Marty Skull and Zack Sabre Jr. and, um, and uh, Styx yeah. and all these people that I kind of came up with. It was nice to get back to wrestling those people again, but it was also cool to you know, get to know some new talent, which is what I'm really excited about uh, Wrestle Carnival as well, because there's so much new talent on that show that I've not seen yeah. before. Uh, I'm really excited to get up there and like checking out some new guys and working with some new people and and, and in such a like new environment as well like this to me it it doesn't seem like it's going to be just another wrestling show it's going to be something it seems to be a completely unique and brand new concept which which is always really exciting yeah Yeah, especially especially after after all this time it'd be like Whenever I get the opportunity to do something new, that's 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 what I'm really excited about. Like, yeah. and I think that's why it's so good about Wrestle Carnival as well because here you are. We've, we've spoken about so much stuff that you've done over your career, and yet 2021 Wrestle Carnival are able to give you something new to do, and I think that's why it's exciting because they're they're trying to work it different with the different concepts and. Um, with the characters and stuff like that so it's it's really exciting to see and it's going to be exciting to see you mixing it up with a couple of the other um guys like they've just mentioned joe lander as part of wrestle carnival like or charlie sterling i could see you working really well with either of those two and um it'll be it'll be really exciting like whilst you mentioned wrestle carnival and like how did you join in wrestle carnival come to be um so i was familiar with gary because i met him a little bit um some xwa shows and yeah. um and especially um, during his time as a photographer and um i really like some of his photography work he, he's done some 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 of my favorite um yeah. pictures from matches i've had he, he's taken so i think he's a really talented photographer um so i was so i got to know him from that and then i saw that he was running his uh first show uh wrestlegate yeah and um, he expressed interest in using me for that at the time, but for, for whatever reason, that didn't come off. Um, definitely no, definitely no hard feelings. Those shows had some great talent on them, so it, it didn't work out for those rec- for those WrestleGate shows. Like I didn't get the opportunity on those ones, but it, it, looking at the rest of that roster, it, it, it's hard to be upset about. It's not something I can be upset about because though you know, I'm like, oh, that person got that match instead instead of me. It's like. Well, yes, yeah, because that person's really good as well. It just didn't yeah. work out this time. Um, but yeah, when Wrestle Carnival came along and he announced that, um, I all like I was tempted to message him straight away and be like, "This, this is something I want to be a part of." But um, for what, for whatever reason, I didn't. Um, I try not to do that too much, but I didn't this time around. And um, so yeah, when he messaged me, um, I think a few months ago now. And asked me to be a part of it. I was like, absolutely yes. I'm so I'm so happy you asked and thought of me. Because that's the thing. Because because that that's all it takes. It just needs to be the right person at the right time. Just needs to think. Oh, I know. Lion Kid could fit in that spot. And there's just so much talent in England right now that it's so easy to l- overlook ninety percent of it. So uh, any at any certain point when a promoter is thinking of you and does want to give you opportunity. You, you, you just feel so lucky to to get that opportunity because that it could easily go to one of two hundred other wrestlers that do just as good, just as good, if not maybe even a better job than you would. Yeah, 
Nah, like I mentioned at the at the beginning, um, when you was announced, I was excited, and I was like, it's it is a perfect fit, like Lion Kid in a carnival. It it fits, yes. and it makes yes. me so excited to like what your body of work could look like. And I think again, whether it's North not wanting to book people down south or whatever the reasons are, there is a huge market for yourself and for the masked wrestlers. I don't, think there's necessarily, I don't think there's necessarily an agenda where the people up north don't want to book people down south. I just think, I think it's just a coincidence. Coincidentally, it didn't happen to work out for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm really excited to work for Wrestle Carnival. Like I keep saying that I'm excited to do something new and like the thing I'm going to do on the show this show is going to be new but i actually have no idea what i'm going to be doing on that first show yet <laughs> i mean I, like i did message gary and was like oh maybe we can do a lion tamers match yeah. and i was like i have no idea what that is like maybe we can come up with a cool set of rules for it and <laughs> i've got an idea for i think would be a cool set of rules for a lion tamers match but yeah. like who, who knows what's going to happen who knows? Maybe I'll, maybe I'll just be one of the regular matches on the show and I'll get to watch and be entertained by all the wacky shenanigans that goes along for the rest of the show. Um, <laughs> either way, I'm sure, I'm sure it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, definitely. Um, so excited. Like, Obviously, the pandemic keeps pushing everything back for us and keeps going back and back and back. But now we've got it um, in Nottingham, Curtain Call, 1st of August. Like... Obviously, they're going to... I think it's 200 fans the venue can hold as well, so... I like what's, that. What's your anticipation just to be getting back in the ring and to be finally having that show? Because I believe I've seen like fancy dress as well, so it's just going to be so <laughs> wacky. Visually, it's going to look amazing. Like, I, I what's your anticipation? You, usually, it's the fans that come up to the wrestlers and ask for photos, but I'm going to be the, that guy... At the show, seeing all these people in fancy dress, like, can I have a photo of you? Can I have a photo of you? Give me a selfie. Like, I'm going to be begging the fans for selfies. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, yeah, this, this thing has gone on for so long. Like, all the, I know, all, we're all so excited to be back. I know all the fans are so excited to be back. Um, that, like, there's going to be, everyone's just going to be so open minded to, yeah. to, to just have some fun. There's going to, I don't think there's going to be, because at some shows you get the occasion, you get occasions where some fans are maybe going on begrudgingly, or they're not really, they're not really fans, or that they want to, that they're there just to kind of like boo the show, so to speak. Um, it doesn't happen often, but it happens on occasion. Mm. But I think that I think this time round, um, there's going to be no chance of that. Everyone's going to be there, like there to have fun and support wrestling, and this is like the perfect show to kind of kick things back off and like to, to get things going again and it's funny it's like because i kind of anticipated like when this was over and when things start to open back up that i might start to get like a few shows trickling slowly yeah. but yeah li literally like things announces like oh here's the schedule of when things are opening back up again in the uk and then literally the following morning i have like 30 dates being thrown at me promoters and it's just like I was not expect I expected things to like build up slow it's like oh maybe the first week I might have one or two people thinking oh, like okay let's start to run shows again yeah. but no people are so raring to go that people people are so I'm not sure if desperate is the word but people were people are so excited so people eager so, to get it going so much, they're so eager there's so much you know, anticipation to get back into wrestling that people they don't want to waste any more time than that's already been wasted they want to jump back in they want to be running the shows and they want to be watching the shows and uh yeah wrestle carnival i think is going to be one of those ones that are gonna capitalize on that excitement and opportunity i mean of people wanting to be back to see the shows they're gonna come back and, and see the shows and this is going to be kind of like i think potentially be the face of like the rebirth of british wrestling yeah after over a year of like almost a year of being being away and so i think people are gonna i think people could potentially associate the wrestle carnival brand as that rebirth as that as something to get excited about so when they do their second and third third and fourth show 
and years down the line they're going to have those memories of wrestle of wrestle carnival kind of bringing wrestling back again yeah definitely um like with everything that's been going on and this pandemic and i think like the roster that's building up as well it isn't the typical geographic roster like you have certain companies um in the midlands where they'll have the same core of people and in north or scotland or down south where each company of very similar because they're still using that he's bringing the talent from all these different directions to bring something new and exciting and again curtain call on the first of august best fancy dress um wins a prize and i just think there's going to well, be so you know what the yeah. prize is i Don't imagine it'd probably be next in the next show would be I... I imagine that'd be one of the prizes i imagine so um but yeah best fancy dress wins a prize and like whether it's wrestling fancy dress or different characters, I just think it's that that added a little bit of excitement for people because they get to get they get to dress up, they get to go to wrestling for the first time in a year and a half, and it's going to be really exciting. So for yourself, you mentioned you've got all these dates coming in. Whether it's for Wrestle Carnival or somewhere else, is there somebody on the British wrestling scene that? you may have not wrestled for a while or you may have never wrestled before that you're wanting to face? Um, not particularly. I, I, I say my, my, my attitude with wrestling these days, like I've got, I've got to obviously pay a bill, pay the bills and make a living. But my, my priority for a long time now has just been just to have some fun. Yeah. And I'm at the point in, in my career now where, where I'm confident enough where I can go out there with almost anyone that's, and and I know I'm going to have a decent match with them, or at least a good match. <laughs> and I know I'm going to have some fun. So I'm kind of not fussed about who I wrestle exactly because I know I'm going to enjoy it. Yeah. But what what really gets excited, what really gets me excited to do that I really like, rather than wrestling this talent or that talent, what I really get excited about is um, different types of booking, yeah. getting to do different types of matches or, or new stuff or new ideas or new types of storylines um just unique ideas like that that's like a lion what... tamer match <laughs> yes <laughs> like that potentially <laughs> who knows maybe no. um some of your some of the viewers in the comments of this get down in the youtube comments and maybe the, some of your viewers can suggest the ideas of what would the rules be to a lion tamers match and maybe gary <laughs> the booking team and get down in those comments and, and um, view some of your ideas and maybe we can make it come to life for real maybe Definitely. maybe maybe the right idea would inspire gary to uh, to pull the trigger on it <laughs> to make it happen um now lion kid like it's been amazing uh talking about your career again you've done so much and it it's going to be so exciting to see what you do within Wrestle Carnival and within all these different bookings that you mentioned. So where can people find you across uh, social media? I am absolutely, not everywhere, but most places, social media, <laughs> at, uh, at Lion Kid UK uh, is where you can find me in most places. Brilliant. Um, so everybody make sure you do follow Lion Kid and make sure again if you're not already make sure you sign up to the Wrestle Carnival newsletter wait for the tickets to be going on sale again curtain call 1st of August Wrestle Carnival finally debuts hopefully we're all going to be able to come out of this pandemic and the shows will be going ahead as planned and yeah. tickets again tickets on sale June 1st June 1st first. First, tickets on sale and get get your fancy dress. Start planning your fancy dress, guys. I can't. I can't <laughs> wait to see it all. <laughs> is is there a particular fancy dress that you want to see? Um, just uh, loads of mini lion kids running like, around. What... <laughs> I have seen a few um, lion kid fancy dresses actually because I sell the I sell the replica masks as well. So there you go. Had, Everybody, uh... buy the replica masks <laughs> and dress up as lion kid. At a curtain oh, call. That, oh, that would pop me big time if I if I look out and there's like a group of like ten or so people all dressed up as like Lion Kid. There's my like entourage that would pop me big time. That would make my day. Um, but <laughs> I've, I've had like fo like photos and videos of people um, dressed up as Lion Kid going out trick and treating at Halloween yeah. time, and that's always been really cool. I always really appreciate that. Like, and, 
Uh, yeah, because they could dress up as anything, and they're choosing to dress up as you. Like that. No, that's when you know you've done you've done something. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. I want to. I just want to get some cool photos. Maybe if like if they're, if they're another wrestler, maybe get some fighting poses with them <laughs> or something. Or if they're like an I don't know, like an anime character, like a ninja or something, maybe I can get do some fighting <laughs> poses with them. But I'm, and maybe just uh, it'd be really cool if at the end of the show, if everyone that's in fancy dress just hangs around after the show, so we can get all get a really big group photo with all the fancy dress people and all the roster together, maybe around the ring. I think that would be really cool, and that would be like. That would be what a, what a great way to end like the first show back after after all this time and the first Wrestle Carnival show. What, what a great fight that would be. That would be amazing. So, again, everybody, Wrestle Carnival presenting Curtain Call 1st of August. Tickets go on general sale via Wrestle Travel on June 1st, so make sure you go over to them. And, again, if you're not already, sign up to the newsletter. Check out um, www.thewrestlecarnival.com. Follow Wrestle Carnival across all social media. If you've enjoyed this interview, again, make sure you follow The Lion Kid. Make sure you hit like and subscribe to the Wrestle Carnival YouTube channel um, for more Beyond the Canvas. I've been Kate Johansson. More importantly, that is The Lion Kid. Thank you. Until next Thank time. Thank you very much, Kurt. Bye-bye, everyone. See you at the Wrestle Carnival. <laughs>